Ah! Greetings, brethren, Cloaking Donkey here, bringing you yet another classic Dark Age of Camelot guide. This time we're looking at the absolute beginner basics of character creation for the realm of Hibernia. So if you plan on becoming a pajama or bathrobe wearing, tree-hugging hippie, then this is the guide for you. If you are however looking for the beginner experience for Midgard or Albion or any of my 1 to 20 leveling guides, check out the cards in the top right corner of the video or check the video description for links to all of the other classic Dark Age of Camelot guides. So when you first create your character in Hibernia, you have the choice between becoming a guardian, a naturalist, a magician, a forester or a stalker. On the actual character creation screen, however, they are called Way of Arms, Way of Nature, Way of Magic, Way of the Grove and Way of Stealth, just because the game tries to be really fancy that way. However, this basic class will only get you to level 5, at which point you have to choose an advanced class and that class will last you forever from that point onward. In general, the advanced classes available for Hibernia are the Hero, Blademaster, Champion, Druid, Bard, Warden, Eldritch, Enchanter, Mentalist, Animist, Veilwalker, Ranger and Nightshade. So you should really think about which of the advanced classes you want to play, because not all of the races can become all of these classes. For example, if you make an elf guardian, you can only become a blade master or a champion. You cannot become a hero. Now, Dark Age of Camelot is a class-based MMORPG, but it is not necessarily based on the role trinity that games such as World of Warcraft have popularized. Instead, there are various group roles, and if you need to know about the group roles, please check out the Basic Beginner's Guide Primer that I made, which explains all of these group roles in detail. In general, one can say the more of these group roles you have in your group, the better your group will be. There are some differences, of course. A caster group doesn't necessarily need melee damage dealers, and a melee group doesn't necessarily need casting damage dealers. The hero is Hibernia's main tank, and it is also a very good melee damage dealer when using Celtic Spear and Large Weapon. As a slight difference to Midgard, caster groups are actually very, very popular in Hibernia. And so your role in Hibernia as a main tank is a little bit more defensive than it would be in other realms. Because in PvE you're trying to keep mobs off your casters, and in RVR you're trying to keep the enemy melees off them. The Blademaster is Hibernia's light tank and main melee damage dealer. Blademasters, uniquely among the Guardians, have the ability to dual wield weapons. And with some good melee support in the group, Blademasters can put out an immense amount of damage. And unlike Caster classes, who at some point will run out of power, Blademasters, when supported properly, can pretty much keep their DPS going indefinitely. The Champion is certainly a decent and solid tank for a PvE. However, much like the Thane in Midgard, it is a caster hybrid tank. But unlike the Thane, champions don't get quite as many damage spells and rely a little bit more on debuffs. Debuffs are particularly strong in solo RVR, but only of course if the server you're playing Classic Dark Age of Camelot on has a zero tolerance policy when it comes to buff bots. If buffs aren't a thing, attribute debuffs become so much more powerful. Because in the case of the champion, for example, you can pretty much get rid of somebody's entire strength and constitution that they are granted by their gear. However, as a hybrid tank class, the champion does not receive the Determination Realm ability. And that does mean that they are not very good for competitive RVR and are really only for casual, solo RVR and for Zergs. The Druid is both the main healer and main buffer of Hibernia. And so most Druids will want to go for Regrowth and Nurture, which are main healing and the main buffing line respectively, and just be really, really powerful supports for their group. Druid's third line nature is very heavily focused on roots, which they have kind of a monopoly on in Hibernia, and as such, nature is a very interesting path to go. However, while leveling up, I would certainly recommend nurture. If nature is the path you want to take, I would respect to nature at level 40. The Bard is Hibernia's all-round support class. They're off-healers, even though their heals aren't particularly great. They're also the Song class, which means they provide the Mighty Speed Song. They're the main crowd-controlling class, but they only focus on Mezes and Interrupts. But they are also the Mana Battery and the class with Endurance Regeneration. Every single group in Hibernia really does need a Bard. The Warden is Hibernia's second all-around support class. They are also off-healers, but they are also the bubble class of Hibernia, the only non-full casting class in the game that has the automatic bubble. At the same time, they are also melee supporters, and they are a melee hybrid class and can go for a weapon spec line. However, your points are a little bit restrictive in that, so you kind of have to choose if you want to be an off-healer or a melee hybrid. 
The Eldritch is a decent damage caster and also provides Hibernia with the only instance of two separate bomb casters. Because of their specific skill lines, Eldritches kind of end up being a little more debuffing characters in later stages of the RVR. Because they just so happen to have the two most powerful debuffs in the game, Disease and Nearsight. Which means if you're playing in a casting group, that will be your primary job and damage will really only be your secondary role. So be apprised of that, if you want to be a main damage caster, you will have to take either the Enchanter or the Mentalist. And speaking of the Enchanter, the Enchanter can be a damage caster if you go for light magic, a bomb caster or a pet pull caster if you go for mana magic, and enchantments is really not necessarily something you should go for. The Enchanter also has coveted resistance debuffs that they can use in RVR to make their realm's spellcasters so much more powerful. This is the reason why Hibernia casting groups are so very powerful. Because not only can they bring a lot of pets to interrupt the enemy healers, they also have lots of stuns available. They have resist debuffs, very powerful single target damage casts, lots of awesome debuffs and races with very high dexterity for all of their casters. The Mentalist can be a damage caster with a pet if you go for light magic or a mana battery supporting off healer if you go for mana magic. While leveling up I would certainly suggest going for mana magic because the light version isn't necessarily wanted by a lot of groups. And mana batteries are simply very important for the leveling process. The Animist can also be a damage caster, but it is mainly a farm class and an area control or a keep defense class. Now don't get me wrong, the Animist is awesome and it is certainly a very unique class, but the Animist simply doesn't fit very well with the standard caster group setup that is popular in Hibernia because their damage type is different from that of the Magicians. All of the Magicians can do heat damage, whereas the Animist does body damage. The Veilwalker is a powerful hybrid melee and casting damage dealer. It's an interesting one and that is the only class in the game that is a hybrid melee while wearing cloth into battle. You do have some buffs however that alleviate that disadvantage and give you a good amount of absorb as if you were wearing something tougher than cloth. But Veilwalkers are certainly not a straightforward class. They're a little difficult to play and a lot of their styles are very situational. Just don't think you can ever do any competitive RVR on a Veilwalker, that is just not going to happen. The Ranger is Hibernia's Archer class and the unique thing about the Ranger is that unlike the other two Archer classes, it can actually be a melee damage dealer of sorts as well. However much you try and work on that however, you're still not gonna be quite as good as a Blade Master because you're just missing those key abilities that make the Blade Master so powerful. Now the Ranger is certainly not a bad Archer class, but Archers in general just are not something I would recommend for new players in the beginning. The same also goes for the Nightshade. In fact, all of the Stealthing classes, so the Stalkers in Hibernia, the Rogues in Midgard and so on, they are just not something that new players should jump into first. I would really recommend that if you're a new player, you should go with any of the other classes. And then if you gain some more experience playing Dark Age of Camelot, you can still come back to the Ranger and Nightshade later. But for a first experience in this game, they can be very, very frustrating. Because, especially because in RVR, they are pretty much an entirely solo class. The only time you will ever see groups as a Ranger is if you group with other Rangers or Nightshades. And as I already said, the same goes for the Nightshade. It's the Assassin class of Hibernia and as such they can also be relatively decent melee damage dealers in PvE, but again they are never going to be quite as good as Blade Masters. Nightshades are absolutely a solo RVR class. You can team up with other Nightshades and other Rangers, but where the class really shines is going around by yourself and assassinating people who dare to venture around by themselves. It's a low utility class and it's very very specific and just like the Ranger I would not recommend this to a new player. Unlike in Midgard there are actually some differences as to the races you want to pick for the various classes. Not every Guardian class has to automatically be a Fearbulk. If you're going for a hero the Fearbulk certainly has the highest damage output. However, when everything is said and done and you have buffs and you're fully geared, the difference really comes out to about 2%. So it really doesn't matter that much in the end, but it does make quite a big difference in the beginning as your weapon skill will start out higher, which means you hit a lot more in melee. Kelt is certainly still an absolutely fine race for a hero. 
Now, I marked Lurie Keen as red, and I do stand by that, but there certainly are arguments to be made for Lurie Keen Pierce and Shield tanks. Because of their high dexterity, they have a better block chance, and because of their high dexterity and quickness, they have an improved evade chance. So they certainly have a defensive bonus over the Fear Bulk, and if that's all you care about, for example, you're trying to make a PvE tank-style hero, then a Pierce Lurikin is certainly nice. However, be apprised that a Lurikin is absolute garbage with spear and two-handed weapon. And as such, you're very much locked into this tank role, and it's not even something I would recommend for RVR. And as such, new players should probably stay away from the Lurikin. For the Blade Master, the race choice really just depends on the type of weapon you want to use. If you want to be a Blunt Master or a Blade Master, you should go with a Fear Bulk, because you will do the highest possible damage. If you want to be a Pierce Master, Kelt is the best choice. Because the Pierce damage is made up of 50% strength and 50% dexterity. And the best race for this is simply the Kelt. While the Elf has high dexterity and high quickness, the Elf race has 10 points in intellect by default, and those 10 points are simply wasted when you become a Blade Master because there's nothing you use intelligence for. And so, while those 10 points aren't gonna be that big of a deal later on, it certainly does make Elf slightly worse, but it is absolutely still possible to make a really good Elf Pierce Blade Master. For Champion, the same applies if you want to go for Blades or Blunt or Large Weapons, then Kelt is the choice. If you want to go for Pierce, you can be both a Lurikin and an Elf, because unlike the Blade Master, Champions actually make use of Intelligence. However, in general, I would not advise you to go for a Large Weapon Champion, those characters really are pretty bad. As hybrid tanks, champions have quite the reduced damage output compared to a hero or a blade master, so trying to compete with them on those grounds is rather pointless. And it's certainly a much better idea to go for the tank angle, because that is something you can compete with them on. For all three of the naturalists, Kelt is simply the best choice. All three of these classes, even the Warden, will do quite a lot of casting throughout their career. And for casting, you just need that dexterity. Dexterity is so important when you are any type of casting class. And so the Fear Bulk with its ridiculously low dexterity is just out. The Sylvans have one of the worst basic stat distribution in the game. And as such, I really would not recommend a Sylvan at all. If you're going for a Warden, there is an argument to be made for the Fear Bulk, because they do a little bit more damage. However, I personally would still choose a Kilt, even if you're going for a Melee Warden. But if you are going for a Melee Warden, I would certainly go with 10 Strength, Dexterity and Quickness, as opposed to 15 Dexterity and 10 Empathy, which really only helps you if you're going for the off-healer type of Warden. For all three of the Magician classes, it's very simple. You want to go for either Lurikin or Elf, both are totally fine. And you want to go for 15 Dexterity and 10 Intelligence. The only class that can be something other than Lurikin and Elf in this category is the Mentalist. They can be Celts, but I certainly would not go for a Celt Mentalist, because Lurikin and Elf are simply too powerful to ignore. The Dexterity advantage that these two races have over the Celt is just too strong. Sadly, Lurikin and Elves cannot be Foresters, so the only viable choice for the Animist is the Kelt. I would really not advise you to go Sylvan or Fearbulk on the Animist, because your best choice for because your best choice for dexterity is already not that great, and you really want to eke out every little point you can. For the Veilwalker, you could make an argument that the Fearbulk has higher strength, and as such, it would be better for the melee damage. However, with the Veilwalker being a caster hybrid and actually making use of spell casts quite a lot, I would certainly recommend the Kelt over the Fearbulk. And if you desperately want to play a Sylvan, Veilwalker is pretty much the only class that they are even borderline good on. For Ranger, the single best choice is the Lurikeen. Lurikeens have incredibly high dexterity, and dexterity is where bow damage comes from. Now, if you want to go for a melee ranger, you want to also be a Lurikeen if you want to go for Pierce, but if you want to go for Blades for some reason, then Kelt is the best choice. However, in general, for Hibernia, I would not suggest you go Blades on any of the classes. Blunt or Pierce is really going to outperform Blades most of the time, especially in RVR, because you just don't have any proper enemies that are vulnerable to slashing damage. The armor types most susceptible to slashing damage are studded and leather armor, which outside of Hibernia are really not on that many classes. And so in RVR, you're really just always going to be at a disadvantage if you use slashing weapons such as blades. For a Nightshade, both the Lurikeen and the Elf are totally fine, because the Nightshade has some hybrid caster action going on, and as such actually makes use of intelligence, so even Elf isn't necessarily that bad. 
All right, and that is pretty much everything you need to know about making your brand new character on the realm of Hibernia. As a little side note, on most classic Dark Age of Camelot servers, Hibernia is the underpopulated realm. So if playing for the underdog is something you like doing, then Hibernia should be your choice. Also, always remember, the grass literally is greener in Hibernia. Alright guys, but that is it for this guide. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and also consider subscribing to my channel for more content on gaming, history and mythology. But until then, I've been the Cloaking Donkey and I'll see you in another video.